Alright folks, welcome back to TGN Anime. Today we're gonna try to build the ultimate defense type loadout for Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker. So far our experience is on one map and one game mode which is the capture the flag, so that's exactly what we'll be building our loadout towards. At the end of the video we'll dive a little bit into other potential game modes that don't require you to protect a capture point or a flag or something of the sort because as a defense type I do believe that your main role is to protect your team and protect the objective and sometimes protecting the objective means picking up the goddamn flag and running with it yourself so that's what we're doing today now the defense types are the ones that have the least amount of announced ability so far they don't have a lot so we're working with limited jutsu limited secret jutsu more will come in the future this is just to start the theory crafting the conversation right now apparently there's an open beta coming out soon ish so we can all get ready for that just in case we can edit loadouts that would be pretty cool all right let's get into it you know looking at the loadout from the beta that was already pretty good for a capture of the flag there's a reason why that loadout was overpowered in the beta it's because it was already a good loadout while the others you couldn't change them so you couldn't really tell if they were bad loadouts or if the attack types and the range types and the heal types are just super underpowered compared to the defense types. My belief is that the defense type loadout was the only good loadout in the game. Some abilities are broken, some abilities need nerfing, but if you were able to mix some of the different abilities that were already announced for the other classes, the defense type wouldn't be as broken as it ended up being. So let's start by building our capture the flag loadout to play with your team, because your role as a defense type is to protect your own flag and to protect your team that is trying to capture and carrying the flag. And in the case of the beta, because the defense type was so powerful, carrying the flag was pretty much your job as well. You could win matches on your own. That's what you do as a defense type, you just win. At least that's the way it was in the beta. I don't expect that to be uh, how it is in the final game. So what do we have for Jutsu? We have the spiky human boulder, the partial expansion Jutsu, the water style shark bomb, the earth style subterranean voyage, the sand shield and the earth style mud wall. We can only pick two Jutsu and one secret Jutsu as always. Just for context, we've seen the spiky human boulder and the sand shield in the closed beta. Those were the two Jutsu that we had available as a defense type. And all the other abilities, we've seen them in different trailers. So we have the partial expansion jutsu. It's a punch. Choji has the ability of uh, enhancing the size of his limbs. In this case, the hand which then does a rotating punch all around him and it seems from the description of this ability that this move is unblockable. I'm not sure if that means that it just goes through a guard or if it's actually a guard break like the heal type strong attack. But anyway, it goes through a guard, it's a rotating motion meaning it can catch multiple enemies and if you're breaking all their guards or you're dealing damage to all of them, that's a pretty powerful ability on its own. The shark bomb from Kisame will first rotate around Kisame and then shoot off in the distance. It's sort of a ranged attack and this shark has a unique property which is if you hit an enemy you'll reduce the number of ninja techniques they can use. This is the description translated from the website. That can mean a lot of things. It can mean that ninja 2 are disabled for a short period of time. It can mean that the cooldowns get longer. But I do believe we are talking about ninja 2 and not their secret jutsu. Because there are descriptions that specifically target the secret jutsu. So this is, I think just increasing cooldowns or disabling jutsu for a short period of time. Since this is kind of a ranged ability, you can hit an opponent from a distance and you're disabling their ninjutsu. If they're in the middle of a fight, that is very, very effective. Subterranean Voyage, I believe Kisame will also be the one teaching you this. It's a movement ability. You go underground and you pop up from the ground closer to your target or just uh, as an escape maneuver. Pretty straightforward. You're immune and vulnerable while you're traveling underground because no jutsu or attacks can hit you. And then we have the Mud Wall, which is a wall. I guess. Actually, let's knock this one out right now. Mud wall versus sand shield. One protects you all around, the mud wall protects you from the front, and then you have to hide behind it. While the sand shield, you can at least move with it. I guess the mud wall's advantage is that you put it up and then you can do other jutsu, while the sand shield, you kind of can't do anything while the sand shield is up. But that's why you play as a team. The sand shield is able to protect moving allies. While you're going from point A to point B, you can protect any allies and they can shoot ninjutsu from within the bubble. So with that, if you're going to try to protect your allies, I think Sand Shield over Mud Wall in most situations for sure. If you're more of a solo player, maybe Mud Wall would, uh, would do it. But I'm gonna pick Sand Shield for, for our loadout because it was so powerful in the beta. The description says that it will block almost any ninja too. And that's true because the only ninja too it won't block are the goddamn secret jutsu, the ultimates. And those take a long time to charge while the cooldown on Sand Shield is nothing compared to that. If you can make your opponents somehow waste their secret jutsu on you just because you have the Sand Shield, you've done your job, man. Sand Shield is incredibly powerful. I'm keeping it on my loadout for Capture the Flag for sure. Then the spiky human boulder was very good for two reasons. One, it made you faster, so when you capture the flag, you would be able to run away with it faster. And two, it knocks opponents back. 
which means that if someone is chasing the flag carrier or you're the flag carrier, everyone you hit will be knocked back a significant distance. Now, this is something that you could probably do with a partial expansion jutsu as well. And if it has a shorter cooldown, that might actually be a better ability. Now, it doesn't give you the movement speed if you're the one carrying the flag, but if you're the guy protecting the flag carrier, it might be a better option. Because by the end of the beta, I actually started seeing a lot of people avoiding my spiky human boulder. They learned to jump. Imagine that. By simply jumping, you can dodge most... Uh, uh, spiky human boulders. It can be tricky because the spiky human boulder is manually controlled so you can sort of steer in a direction that would try to catch someone falling down from a jump but it's very difficult. People have learned to counter the spiky human boulder and they've learned how to do that very very fast. So my guess is the spiky human boulder won't be very useful for too long unless you're just using it as a movement ability and if you're doing that I think the subterranean voyage might be a better choice. I think if your goal is to protect someone who has captured the flag then send you to protect the capture itself and then to knock opponents away from the flag carrier partial expansion jutsu over spiky human boulder those are the two jutsu that i would choose for the defense type and then we have three secret jutsu to choose from to complement our two ninja two we have the super expansion jutsu the water style super shark bomb jutsu and the water prison jutsu the water prison is the one we've seen in the beta a ball of water is created and everyone caught in that area is going to be trapped in the water prison that can be great for just paralyzing a target to make a daring escape with a flag or in team battles to set up for combos that can also be kind of devastating the super expansion jutsu seems to be something a bit more aggressive a bit more attacking focused which uh, the description reads temporarily enlarge your body to five times its size, hit the ground with your huge body, and damage enemies within range. We've seen this in the trailer, we've seen this in a couple of screenshots. It seems like, just like Choji, your character will be able to get huge and then slam the ground. This one, it's very different. I know I'm gonna make a comparison that seems way out there, but it reminds me of the big ball Rasengan. Naruto jumps in the air and points the Rasengan downwards, and in practice, in gameplay terms, this seems kind of similar. Your character gets big and then attacks downwards as well. The application seems very similar, but of course this is a defense type ability and the other is an attack type ability. So it's like these two abilities despite being similar they uh, fit into different roles and then the super shark bomb jutsu from kisame uh, from the description it sounds like it just shoots a water shark at foes and if it hits it will lower the amount of ninjutsu they can use just like the shark bomb i don't really see how useful we can be with uh, our super expansion jutsu that's more of a kill the enemy team type of deal and not really a protect your flag carrier type of thing if you're protecting your flag maybe i can see uh, a case being made for it but in general, for Capture the Flag, I'd probably stay away from that. Then we have the Water Prison, which we've already seen tons of uses in the beta, and that's probably the best choice. The only argument I would probably make for the Super Shark Bomb Jutsu is that uh, if you're not carrying the flag, and uh, your, your friends are, your teammates, you can shoot the shark from a distance. And disabling the enemy Jutsu will hinder their possibilities of chasing down and hitting someone with a, a Rasen Shuriken, a Fireball Jutsu, because their Jutsu will be disabled for a short period of time, and that might be enough for your teammate to capture the flag. That said, I do think the Water Prison is a bit more versatile. Usually, when you use the Sand Shield, people People gather around you trying to get in as soon as the sand shield is over and you can just catch an entire team with a water prison jutsu at that time so like i said the loadout from the beta was already pretty good because i would actually only make a single change to it i would take the spiky human boulder out and get the partial expansion jutsu now you lose some mobility but if you're working as a team maybe you won't need that mobility and this is of course just in case you're not the designated flag capture guy because if you are then we're talking about a different type of loadout and as you might have noticed this loadout is very focused on on capturing a flag and protecting the flag carrier. Other game modes might not have such objectives and the loadout I would make for a more combat oriented defense type loadout would be something like shark bomb for ranged attacks and disabling enemy jutsu, partial expansion jutsu to knock the opponents back so we can use our ranged shark bomb attack and then I think the super expansion jutsu as a secret jutsu because people will be trying to come in. If you keep knocking them back and hitting them from a distance with the shark bomb they will try to get in and attack you from close range. That's when you pop the super expansion jutsu it will probably deal a ton of damage we're not sure about the numbers yet but from the description it does sound like it's something devastating also don't forget that the defense type when you hit the strong attack your attack cannot be interrupted that is a perfect way to initiate a combo even if your opponent beats you and has better timing than you they cannot interrupt your triangle button and that already knocks the opponent back a little bit which might be enough distance to you know recover some cooldown on the shark bomb or the partial expansion jutsu and that's the defense type loadout i would love to know if you guys have any better 
better ideas, make sure to post your loadouts in the comments down below and don't forget to explain them. Very important part. Last time we tried to reach the ultimate range type loadout and we have a suggestion by Tyrun Sethi. Now he has a long explanation but the basic idea of this loadout is use the Shikigami Dance shield to protect yourself and shoot fireballs from around the shield or when the opponent circumvents the shield itself. Paper Storm to disable opponents in general. I like the idea, you do not have to apologize for the long post. I did ask people to explain why they were posting uh, their own loadout. So I like that one a lot. If you missed the ultimate range type loadout video, you can check it out right here. If you're in the mood for something else, there's also the video at the bottom. But as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku. I'm losing my voice because I'm still sick from Hungary, which is where I went on vacation. And I'll see you guys next time. Boy.